this is the video I've been planning to make for World Ostomy Day. It might just about get to go up before the day is over. Um, I thought I'd chat to you a bit about why, why I had my stoma and also about a charity that is helping uh, young children uh, deal with having an ostomy themselves. Um, I, I'm lying down because I've just taken some photos for um, World Ostomy Day and because I'm usually in, in a wheelchair uh, I can't do the getting your belly out thing as easily unless I lie down so this is my uh, current position um and so um I'll first start with telling you a little about how my ostomy came about and um how I've adapted to it and um things like that okay here I am um I'm now up in I'm going to tell you a little about my <clears throat> story around getting an ostomy. Interestingly, <clears throat> the day I'm recording this is both World Ostomy Day and World Cerebral Palsy Day. So the days both mean a lot to me as I have cerebral palsy and an ostomy as well. Um, I had my ostomy last November um, I had a um, vulvus uh, I think it's referred to as a vulvus of my colon and things weren't progressing through as they should um, it transpired that I had a sort of chronically unstable digestive system and that if they, if this hadn't been addressed it it could have got very serious and um, I don't like to think what could have happened uh, over the last um, few years I had suffered increase in pain and um, more sort of gastrointestinal dysfunction than I'd had um, previously in my life. I'd always had some level of dysfunction which they tell you to expect with the type of CP I have and also with the lack of mobility and things. Uh, and over the years I had had trouble with um, chronic recurring vomiting and um, appetite and things. I was a quite ridiculously skinny child but I was fairly active for somebody with CP and I didn't tend to eat all that much really. <clears throat> And uh, there weren't many weeks when I didn't have um, spells of vomiting <clears throat> and no one ever really explained um, why this was or attempted to get to the root of the problem. This was until last year. Uh, a friend of mine had had um, gallstones um, and had similar symptoms to uh, what I was experiencing and I'd also developed a sort of lump on the <clears throat> right side of my abdomen and it wouldn't go away and it was getting sort of intermittently very painful and um, I was having serious um, 
pain, like colon pain and stomach pain and all sorts of things, but you just sort of, I, I stopped um, eating a lot of food and drank a lot of Complan, which is a meal replacement drink, and uh, also Pediasure, which I've found is a lot, that works out a lot cheaper if you're buying it, because it comes in a can and there's more servings, but that's a side point. Um, so, uh, this had gone on and on, and then I happened to go for one of my uh, regular clinic visits where I have an injection once a month, and uh, they um, ask about various uh, things, whether you've had infections and if you're experiencing any pain, and um, I happened to mention this uh, increase in pain in my right side and the nurse had a prod around and um, said that's not gallstones that's your bowel so she then referred me to um, originally the continence team who um, wanted to look at um, starting me on um, like intestinal washouts with a product called pyristine but due to the um, hand function I, I have quite severe problems with fine motor control and uh, also um, I can't get into particular positions because I'm, I'm held up by a wheelchair like the sides of my wheelchair hold me in, uh, in like a purpose built seat. And if I was on a conventional toilet or my toilet at home, it, it has rails, so I would need both hands to keep me in place. So nobody could work out a way of me being able to operate this machine. And I have nobody that would that would be able to administer the thing for me as um like caregivers aren't allowed paid caregivers aren't allowed and i live on my own and my dad supports me a lot but he didn't feel comfortable uh, doing this kind of medical procedure and i was very um reticent about it because it's not the kind of thing you really want a parent to have to do. And my mum passed away a few years ago, so um, she wasn't... A, I would have allowed my mum to do it, but, um, like, Dad seemed kind of a step too far, and I didn't want to sort of... It would be like a daily thing, and we don't live in the same house, we live close to each other, but... It didn't seem like a daily thing that I would be able to keep up with or that it would mean that he would be very tired and he didn't feel comfortable. The district nurses, which if you're in England, the district or community nurses come out or you go to clinics and they sort, think that they sort my catheter out and things, but they wouldn't do this either. So um, I then got referred, well also the nurse um, I spoke to was somewhat mystified that nobody had ever sort of gone down this route before to prevent this kind of problem occurring but uh, all, but I, I was trying to point out that the age I am, I am 40 now, uh, I, you didn't get so monitored as you do um, these days uh, like she said she, if I'd have been a child she would have referred me to all the hay she wasn't used to having somebody with my problem who was an adult so she didn't quite know what to do with me so uh, we had a bit of a discussion and I discussed things with my regular rehabilitation my neuro rehabilitation consultant and their nursing team and I decided to go and see a colorectal surgeon 
um, this surgeon had trained under uh, a wonderful guy who'd operated on my mum and saved her life 30 years ago um, because she had a very interesting abnormality that you see uh, once in your career. She, she had um, a congenital collidocal cyst and she was what's called situs ambiguous which is where um, parts of your anatomy are back to front so um, it's kind of a shock to the surgeons when they open you up or at least it was in those days because they didn't image quite so much so um, I uh, mum had spoken about this surgeon being trained by the great professor that she had a great faith in so I decided to um, um, request to go and see this surgeon privately and um, I went to see her because on the NHS I could have asked to go onto her team but you wouldn't necessarily have got to have seen her so I wanted to have a discussion with somebody I knew had a lot of experience with um, like doing surgeries and strange sort of anatomy and such things and I went into her clinic room and within two minutes she'd worked out what was wrong with me and suggested I had a colostomy as soon as possible. So about three months later I had an elective colostomy after having lots of images imaging and things I had an elective colostomy and when they got in there it was slightly worse than she'd expected so she took a meter of my colon out and um, also shortened the rectal stump so you don't get uh, a lot of rectal mucus which you can get with an ostomy quite a lot and because I struggle with continence, uh, she wanted that to be as less of an issue as was possible for me. So uh, I had the ostomy done. I'll give you a bit of a squeeze. Um, this is what it looks like. And I'll... Um, you will have seen a better images of it in the previous film uh, and um, I went in for surgery um, and I have to say it was one of the least painful surgeries I've ever had which um, although I think that might be actually relative um, and they were very good at providing uh, pain relief and so on so about um, a day or two later I was allowed to eat and I was eating and eating a lot because I suddenly had this voracious appetite which was completely odd and um, I just wanted to eat lots of food and I'd eaten lots of um thing you know things that I'd thought of what that were healthy and um, uh, nothing was sort of happening with the colostomy it was just still and people were starting to get slightly worried so they they gave me more medicine and only a small amount of output happened and then one surgeon decided that because I'd then been in for about something like two or three weeks um, of uh, them trying to get things working that he would send me home so off I went and dad was a little dubious and I was just uh, absolutely dying to come home because I, I missed the cat dreadfully and uh, scout uh, the family dog and I wanted to be at home so I I got home 
and um, 24 hours later I was taken very ill and they get, they gave me a direct admission note back to the unit that I was that that I, the gastro unit that that I'd been on uh, but unfortunately there were no beds on the unit so I went next door and um I I was developing a really high temperature and um throwing up blood and all sorts of things and it transpired I'd got an ileus which is where your um colon um sort of stops working you see when when you have um, any kind of gastric well any surgery on your intestines and I'd only got a tiny bit of colon left anyway they tend to get a bit sort of angry and just go to sleep and because mine weren't particularly active anyway uh, it took um, a bit of intervention to get them going so I had a nasal gastric tube and um, some very hefty uh, clear out medication and uh, eventually we did get things working it took another few weeks but we did get stuff working and we worked out that maybe because uh, I have such a small amount of colon left my colostomy actually behaves a great deal more like an ileostomy and doesn't take kindly to a lot of high fiber and healthy foods that I'd um, been enjoying eating so as soon as we cut those out um, I, I had a lot better sort of result and I've been trying to reintroduce a lot of them and we're getting there very slowly and I now have I've never had so little gastric pain in my whole life as I have now. I mean, I'll get, I, ha I can have intense pain if I experience blockages and the, um, and the blockage I was hospitalized with was excruciatingly painful. I have to say that was really bad pain, but generally, um, I have never felt so good on the gastric side of things. I, I wake up and it's quite, it's fantastic to feel no pain. Generally you wake up, you eat like a bowl of cereal, you eat um, it's a sort of a meal in general and you don't get sort of strange shooting pains in your intestine where because for years it had been twisting and untwisting so I had um, adhesions as well um, so that was a great deal of the issue and I just I, I am so grateful to my ostomy and I'm so grateful to Maggie at Let's Talk IBD for posting the wonderful videos that got me through uh, the first few months with my ostomy and helped me prepare, prepare for uh, having the surgery um, in the first place it made me much less scared and um, she has a most wonderful channel um, but also I wanted to mention um, a charity that that uh, helps children uh, who are having ostomy surgery. Uh, I'll go and get my uh, young friend over here. This is Osto, this is Buttony. He, he is a Oh, you can't see very well there. He is a bear and he has an ostomy pouch. Um, and it's too tight for me to get off. There. 
and he has a stoma. He has an ostomy pouch and a stoma, just like me. Um, and this this is a wonderful charity who provide these wonderful, fantastic bear friends for children and young people who are who are um, having ostomy surgery. Because pers I think it's the most wonderful idea because when I was a child with a disability, I always wanted toys that looked like me. I used to put splints on my dolls and teddy bears to um, uh, create something that looked like me. And these are the these guys are the most wonderfully made bears. And I think it's so nice to be able to give a child uh, something like this f to have when they're going through the surgery so they can sort of learn to understand what's going on and have something that looks like them and make them slightly less scared. So um, if you want to support this wonderful charity Follow the link in my um, description and um, head over. And if you know anybody that uh, would find a bear like Buttony useful, um, you can nominate them or you could raise money to make sure that uh, children who need these bears have access to them. And... Um, I just want to say happy World Ostomy Day. I hope all my ostomates and all you guys are enjoying a fulfilling and wonderful life with your ostomies. And um, let's spread ostomy awareness and live productive lives.